Hello, my name is Kerry Lewis and I'm a member of the MrBruff.com writing team. Today I'm going to talk about noun phrases which are also minor sentences. First, some quick revision. A noun is the name of a person, for example Mr Bruff, a place, for example London, or a thing, for example a book. But what's a noun phrase? It's a word or a group of words to describe a noun. These words can come before or after the noun. Let's look at some examples. Here the noun is cat. The word my describes the cat, so the two words together make a noun phrase. You can have any number of words to make a noun phrase. For example, my oldest cat, both of my cats, my grumpy cat. If you'd like to stretch and challenge yourself, a pre-modified noun phrase is when the describing words are before the noun. Describing words can also come after a noun. We might have a preposition, for example, cat on the fence, cat in the garden, or the ing form of a verb, cat hissing at me, cat purring over there, or the word that, cat that ran away, cat that bit me. Again, if you'd like to stretch and challenge yourself, these are called post-modified noun phrases because the describing words are after the noun. So, how can knowing about noun phrases help you? Let's begin by looking at some non-fiction examples. Light is the noun. Light at the end of the tunnel is a noun phrase. USA is a noun. USA strong is a noun phrase. As with many noun phrases, we often need to understand what's happening so we can make sense of them. Here, Donald Trump was talking about the coronavirus pandemic which, at that time, had just arrived in America. His use of the noun phrases shows his belief that the pandemic would soon come to an end because America is strong, and this is emphasised by his use of capital letters. Noun phrases are also used in advertising in an effective way. This is the back of an Easter egg box. We have the noun chocolates, and the noun phrase are most loved chocolates. The clever use of are most loved encourages you to agree with them. Next, we have some very clever noun phrases to describe the chocolates. Tempting toffee, creamy fudge, triple chocolate, gooey caramel. Listen to the rhythm there. And the words deliberately make your mouth water because they're to do with the sense of taste. Another clever use of noun phrases is right at the very end, where the advertisers have saved the factual information until last. Egg is the noun, and hollow milk chocolate egg gives you information that's very important here, because you don't want to be thinking that you're buying a solid chocolate egg. Then we have the noun phrase, egg with an assortment of milk, white and dark chocolates, and again, this is important factual information. So, at the beginning, we have the noun phrase that appeals to our emotions, then we have the noun phrases that appeal to our sense of taste, and finally, we have the factual noun phrases. In fiction, noun phrases can also be used in an interesting way. Our first example is from A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Foggier yet and colder. Piercing, searching, biting cold. The first minor sentence, foggier yet and colder, freezes that moment in time and develops a mood of unease. Then we have the noun phrase. All of the words, piercing, searching, biting, describe the noun cold. The list of adjectives quickens the pace and emphasises this. It creates a mood of being under attack. In the next example, Scrooge has been unnerved by the sight of his dead business partner on his door knocker. Scrooge searches his house for intruders. The noun phrases are in bold. Sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, all as they should be. Nobody under the table, nobody under the sofa. A small fire in the grate, spoon and basin ready, and a little saucepan of gruel, Scrooge had a cold in his head, upon the hob. Nobody under the bed, nobody in the closet, nobody in his dressing gown, which was hanging up in a suspicious attitude against the wall. Lumber room as usual. Old fire guard, old shoes, two fish baskets, washing stand on three legs, and a poker. The noun phrases quicken the pace as the tension starts to rise. 
as Scrooge checks his house for anything out of the ordinary, you can almost hear him saying the words out loud to reassure himself. Dickens also repeats the word nobody. On the surface, Scrooge appears to be pleased that nobody is there, but the repetition of this word implies that really he's quite worried. Scrooge places the last noun phrase, a poker, right at the end of the sentence. This draws our attention to the word. Perhaps Dickens is suggesting that Scrooge has a weapon, should he need it, and for Scrooge this is quite reassuring. In our final example, from The Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll, we have noun phrases used in a different way. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frabjous day, Kalu kalay, he chortled in his joy. It doesn't matter that we have made up words and that they're nonsense. The noun phrases, in purple, quicken the pace, and this time they reflect the speaker's joy, as opposed to the fear and tension that we saw with the previous two examples. To summarise. Noun phrases can be used to quicken the pace, develop a mood or atmosphere of tension, or emphasise feelings such as excitement and joy. Noun phrases can also be used to focus our attention on particular words and phrases and the message they contain. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to buy a copy of Mr Bruff's Guide to Grammar, I put the link in the description below. In the meantime, please like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you in the next video.